How Volkswagen started, grew and became a $75 billion company The Volkswagen Group is a leading German multinational corporation involved in the design, manufacture and distribution of automobiles and related services with its headquarters in Wolfsburg, Germany. As of 2016, the company overtook Toyota as the world's biggest automobile manufacturer and by 2017, it had sold at least 10 million vehicles globally. How Volkswagen Started The Volkswagen Group began as the limited liability company for the preparation of the German People's Car or Gesever for short and was founded on May 28, 1937 by the German Labour Front, a Nazi organization with the sole purpose of mass-producing the Volkswagen car, also known as the Volkswagen Beetle, which was designed by Ferdinand Porsche's consulting firm, with the backing and support of Adolf Hitler. Hitler also named the car the Kraft Deutsche Freude KDF, or Strength Through Joy Car and he ensured that there was widespread marketing of the car and conveyed to the German citizens the impression that owning the KDF car was a thing of great pride. And since the car was low-priced, they were to see that the National Socialist government was also providing for their needs. One year later, in September 1938, the Gesovo name was changed to Volkswagen Werk GmbH or the Volkswagen Factory Limited Liability Company. Volkswagen Werk GmbH had a factory built near Fallersleben, but before the mass production could start, World War II began in 1939 and the factory was then used for the production of military equipment such as the V1 flying bomb and the automobiles whose designs were based on the Volkswagen Beetle such as the military Köpplewagen also known as the Porsche Type 82 and the Schwimmwagen, also known as the Type 166. Because of its contributions to the ongoing war, the plant became a big target for Allied bombers and so by the time the war was over, the plant had been destroyed. As the war ended, Volkswagen GmbH's sales dropped drastically, partly due to the ruined factory and partly due to the fact that Hitler's marketing crusade focused on the Nazi ideals that at this point, the German citizens were trying to move away from. To make matters worse, no British car manufacturer was interested in investing in the company or its automobiles, the impression being that the vehicle does not meet the fundamental technical requirement of a motor car, it is quite unattractive to the average buyer. To build the car commercially will be a completely uneconomic enterprise. At this point, the company needed a strategy in order to attract international consumers. So, in June 1945, Major Ivan Hurst, a member of the British Army Royal Electric and Mechanical Engineers REME, took over the factory and restarted production. The government then declared that German automobile production was to be at 10% of the quantities produced as at 1936. Volkswagen Werk GmbH managed to survive this period by producing cars for the British Army until 1948, when the British government handed it back to Germany under the management of Hendrich Nodoff. How Volkswagen Grew The restart in production in 1948 was slow due in part to the lack of raw materials. However, the Type 1 Volkswagen was redesigned into the Type 60 Volkswagen, which was exported first to Britain and then to Switzerland, Belgium, Luxembourg, Sweden, Denmark and Norway. This would mark the start of Volkswagen's commercial recovery and success on the international market. Two new models were then introduced. The Transporter Van was launched in 1950, while the Kamen Gear Coupe was launched in 1955. Both vehicles were exported alongside the Type 60 Volkswagen and they made great sales in the international market. Although in the beginning, the fact that the cars were small in size had a weirdly rounded appearance 
and how the connection to the Nazis in Germany affected the Americans' impression and purchasing interest in the vehicles. Eventually, the vehicles gained acceptance and Volkswagen America was created in 1955. Five years later, in 1960, the company name was changed to Volkswagen Werk Artegosel Shaft or Volkswagen Werk AG for short after the flotation on the stock market of parts of the federal government stake in the company. In its quest for expansion, Volkswagen Werk bought Auto Union from Daimler Benz, which would become the subsidiary to produce the first Audi models after the war. Auto Union then went on to merge with another German manufacturer called NSU Motoren Werk AG, resulting in a new company called the Audi NSU Auto Union AG in 1969. The name of this subsidiary would later be changed to Audi AG in 1985. As the company continued to grow, by the late 1970s, Volkswagen AG began to venture into other activities such as leasing and distribution. It was during this period that the acronym VAG was introduced to represent the company as a group. In 1982, Volkswagen Group signed an agreement to cooperate with SEAT, a Spanish car manufacturer. Four years later, in June 1986, Volkswagen finally made SEAT, S-E-A-T, its first non-German subsidiary company by purchasing a 51% stake in the company. By December of the same year, the controlling stake had increased to 75%, making Volkswagen a major shareholder in the Spanish company. And by 1990, Volkswagen took full ownership of SEAT seat by buying the entire company. In 1991, Volkswagen signed a partnership contract with a Czech car manufacturer, Skoda Automobilova AS, in addition to a 30% stake in the company which it will go on to increase to 70% in December 1995. By 1998, Volkswagen went on to acquire three other automobile brands, the Bentley, the Bugatti and the Lamborghini. As 2002 came around, the company decided to do a bit of restructuring and was divided into two major groups of brands. The Volkswagen brand, which will cover the classic vehicles such as the Volkswagen Bentley, Bugatti and Skoda brands and the Audi brand which would cover the automobiles in the sporty category like the Audi, Seat and Lamborghini. Volkswagen made the decision to integrate the Porsche AG company into its own group of companies. So in December 2009, it bought stakes of 49.9% in Porsche AG. However, there were quite a few legal problems such as a criminal probe into the former management staff that prevented the immediate takeover of the company. So it wasn't until August 2012 that Volkswagen finally bought the remaining stakes worth 100% of Porsche AG shares making it one of Volkswagen's subsidiary companies. In 2010, Volkswagen bought a 19.9% stake in Suzuki Motor Corporation who in turn invested a portion of the amount it received from Volkswagen into 1.49% stakes in Volkswagen. Unfortunately, the mutual investment didn't last more than a year because in 2011, Suzuki filed a lawsuit appealing the return of the 19.9% shares from Volkswagen. On August 2015, Volkswagen alongside BMW and Daimler AG expressed their interest in automated cars, which were indicated when Nokia announced that it had signed a contract to sell its digital maps division to the three automobile manufacturers for 2.8 billion euros. Despite the continuous legal problems, Volkswagen continued to move forward, even when after 2015, the company spent two years trying to cover up research that showed that there was a security flaw in the keyless ignition of the Volkswagen vehicles. The company continued to press onwards to success. By 2018, Volkswagen set its sights on the electrification of its vehicles in 16 manufacturing plants. It invested $48 billion on electric vehicle batteries with the intention of fitting them into electric cars being built 
by the end of 2022. How valuable is Volkswagen now? As of 2018, the Volkswagen company had a net income and revenue upwards of 11 billion euros and 230 billion euros, respectively, with more 642,000 employees in subsidiary companies involved in transportation, financial services, logistics and design across the world, producing more than 10 million vehicles each year and was worth more than $75 billion as of 2017. Thank you for watching our videos. We'd like to give you another interesting video for you to enjoy next. But before then, our team will be very happy if you can like this video and share it with your friends on social media. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss other interesting videos like this. Look at your screen now to see two other videos we had picked for you to enjoy next. We love you.